Now, Zimbabwe's police are treating the country's former vice president, uh, uh, Pelagezela Mpoko, as a fugitive. He apparently fled before he could be questioned by anti-corruption law enforcement officials. Mpoko served alongside current president Emerson Mnangagwa. Uh, former president uh, Robert Mugabe was ousted by the military uh, in, uh, 2000, in November 2017. But Mpoko and Mnangagwa have fallen out. So let's get some perspective on this and other issues. Uh, by our uh, analyst, political commentator, uh, Dr. Pedzisay Rohanya. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Welcome to the program. Thank you. All right, so uh, we were hoping to get hold of uh, um, uh, former President um, Poko's uh, lawyer just to get a sense of where he is and if in fact he is a fugitive from the law, uh, we might still get him. But your reading of the situation, there was a video that I saw during the course of this week where they tried to arrest him and uh, either his wife or family members stopped that police officer. What do you make of what's happening? There are two things that we, we need to understand. Mm. Firstly, there is a selection uh, application of the law uh, in Zimbabwe. And secondly, there is a, a party state security uh, uh, complex or conflation. Um, these two things have made the situation in Zimbabwe as far as judicial processes are concerned an animal farm type mm. of uh, society where uh, all animals are equal but some, more, some animals are more equal than others. But uh, if you go back uh, 43 years ago, Edison Jonathan Dadi was a then veteran nationalist wrote mm. a book published in Australia and Sydney in 1976 called The Law as an Instrument of Oppression in Southern Rhodesia. And in that book, Edison Jogo says, in Southern Rhodesia, a prison is a place where big criminals keep smaller ones. So Mboko is aware that mm. there is no due processes of the law. But the situation is further worsened by utterances by uh, President Mnangagwa. There is a video that is yeah. circulating online in which uh, the president is saying, uh, ZANPF uh, is the police. ZANPF is the army. Mm. ZANPF is the air force. So how could Mboko go and submit himself to a partisan uh, uh, mm. security apparatus like that? But also Mnangagwa in, in, in November 2017 actually fled to South Africa because he knew he was not going to face justice in, in Mugabe's courts. Mm. So equally so, Mboko knows he will not face mm. justice in but are, are, courts. Are, the courts, That's running away. are the courts not independent? They so. are not independent. They are independent de jure in terms of the constitution because we've got separation of, of powers in terms of our constitution. But de facto, <coughs> in practice, they are not. That's why the president says we are everything. We are the courts. We are the judiciary. We are the army. Mm. We are the police. We are the air force. What kind of talk is that? from a head of state who knows that there must be separation of powers, the judiciary is supposed to be independent, the executive is supposed to be independent, the legislature is supposed to be independent. But also, if you look at the current crackdown that is going on in Zimbabwe against opposition supporters, politicians from ZAN come out openly and say, we are going to arrest you, we are going to beat you. And the police does exactly mm. that, extra legal, extra judicial, attacks on citizens without following the due processes mm. of the law. There is no rule of law in Zimbabwe and Bogo being a member of the system. He knows what he faces yeah. and that's why he's evading justice. All right, so <laughs> is he innocent? No, that cannot be for me to say yeah. his yeah. innocence has to be uh, 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 done through the, the judicial processes. He is facing an, an allegation that he removed the criminals when he was vice president mm. uh, of the republic. But uh, I cannot stand in the studio and pronounce uh, mm. you know, uh, a justice on, a, on, a, on an alleged victim. But the problem is that when you have one law for ZANPF elites and another law for the rest of us, you face this kind of stuff where people think that mm. the law is being used uh, 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 as an arm to uh, it's legalized oppression. The law is used to oppress people not to seek justice. This is the, the reason why mm. he is running away, because he also knows he has been part of the system and he knows that there is no rule of law in the country. That's why he's running away. What does this do for President Mnangagwa? He's been trying to convince the international community that the post-Mugabe era, things will be different. This is a new era, a new time. 
uh, come and invest, Zimbabwe is the place to be. These kinds of events, what do they do for him? No, we, we have always been clear that uh, the removal of Mugabe was not adequate enough to address the problems. Because what we have is a system that is oppressive, is a system that is corrupt, is a system that is rotten, is a system that is decomposed. So what needs to be addressed in Zimbabwe is the decomposition and corruption of the political. Mm. So Munangagwa may go tomorrow just as Mugabe has gone, but nothing has changed because the institutions, the structures of the state that are responsible for mm. oppression, you actually have Rhodesian type laws, apartheid type laws, and the behavior of the police. If you look at the footage that was going on in Ulawayo, in Harare, where citizens are attacked while it's there, they are lawfully assembling. Mm tells you that there is something fundamentally wrong in the political culture of the state, in how state institutions are run, and mm -hmm. those state institutions. So the relationship between the state, um, the citizens, and the law need to be addressed. You need a revamp of the political economy. That is the relationship between agents, structures, and institutions in order to allow uh, uh, whoever comes into the office of the mm. president or whichever institution they abide by the rule of law. There is fundamentally a breakdown of the rule of law. If you look at it right now as we speak, there is a de facto a state of emergency in Zimbabwe. The constitution has been suspended. And when it is suspended, people go to the courts to seek justice. The justice system is also blocked. So what do Zimbabweans do in the face of uh, 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 impediments? To the law, to to to, to, to the rule, of, to the rule of law. Yeah. The only option that they will have in this not so distant future is civil disobedience. Is this why the government is at pains to ban all form of protest, strikes, and demonstration? You, you see, what the government is doing is consistent with the uh, illegitimacy. A government that is elected by the people for the people, which is simply uh, what democracy entails, must not be afraid. Uh, of its citizens protesting because it is provided in the constitution 50, uh, mm -hmm. section 59 it allows peaceful protest and i should stress peaceful protest that those even those who want to protest must do so in an orderly peaceful lawful manner which they did there was there was no provocation mm -hmm. from them but they were attacked while it's the, they were seated and everything but to address the situation in zimbabwe currently we need to return to democratic legitimacy. If you look at today, the European Union issued a statement, a very damning mm. statement, an indictment on, Mugabe, on Mnangagwa's rule, which shows that Mnangagwa has not changed from the system that mm. Mugabe used to operate under. He needs to change that the structures, the institutions, and the political culture of impunity has to change in order for Zimbabwe to move forward. He's trying to marketize the economy, liberalize the economy without democratizing politics under authoritarian tutelage. It cannot work. It worked in China. But Zimbabwe is not China. And China is not Zimbabwe. All right. Dr. Rania, we're going to have to leave it there. But thanks very much indeed uh, for coming through and uh, sharing your thoughts with us today. Thank you so much. You're welcome.